Some days I just realize I need much better lighting than I have. <laughs> hey guys, it's Mama Making Time, and today we're doing something really different for me. We're not even looking at constructing a kit, we're looking at the rarest kits in my collection and why some of them are rare and why some of them are quite controversial. I've wanted to do a video like this for a while and I've always prided myself on, you know, I, I don't just unbox a kit, I'll try and re review it as a build, whether that's getting the new F35 or building a Lancaster in a weekend or doing old school model kits like the owl that we looked at last week. And in fact, it was the owl that made me think. I have some really rare kits in my collection and I'd really love to talk about them. Now, the rarity of them is up to the bait, but to me, these are kits that I would find very hard to replace or maybe are just quite unique in their presentation. And I know in this channel, we quite often talk about and how that can stop you making some of your rarer kits. In fact, most of these I haven't made for that reason. I'm scared of doing them wrong and then having to replace them. And what if I can't do them good enough? What if I can't do the kit justice? How am I going to replace it? I know, RG agrees. So for some of these, you might not think they're super rare. For some of them, you might think, why am I showing this? But hopefully I can convince you whilst I discuss things. There are tiny stamps included below, so if you want to skip through the video, you certainly can do. Oh, and if you want to see these built at some point, make sure you hit that subscribe button and leave a comment of which one you really want to see built first. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I know which one people are gonna vote for. Right, let's get into it. Number five. Airfoots's TSR2 and Poppycraft's Afro Arrow. Well, I'm kind of cheating. First time I'm doing is a double because people always talk about the parallels between the TSR2 program and the Avro Canada Arrow program. So I thought, why not do them both together? For those who know me prior to YouTube and know my website, and I knew it went viral on a couple of forums at one point, I built an Afro Arrow before. In fact, I actually built it in sort of a modern gray scheme with these beautiful silhouette maple leaves on the tail, and I actually think I did quite a good job with it. There weren't really any panel lines or weathering because this was me a long time ago where I basically just painted in a colour and that was it. So I'm really excited to do this again at some point. However, the kit is quite rare. In fact, this tool was originally released in 1987, re-released in the 1990s and in the early 2000s before having a new tool released in 2012. I've never seen one of these boxings as new tools, but I have been assured that they do exist. But I don't know, I, I, in all my years searching on eBay, I've never seen one. <laughs> the Avro Arrow holds the heart of many people in Canada and is such an important aircraft, both for political and aviation reasons. Like the TSR2, it was an aircraft that was killed in its prime, and for many people, building it in what if schemes, like what I did originally, or building it in its beautiful prototype schemes are just so desirable. And yet, no one else has built this aircraft. It was only ever done by Hobbycraft, which is a Canadian company anyway, who did many interesting aircraft, including the CF-100, which I've built on this channel previously, and also the CT-114 Tutor, which I've also done on this channel, and I have a newer boxing off to do at some point. So, what's more surprising, perhaps, then, is FX's TSR2. FX is such a well-known company. In fact, they're synonymous with just the hobby in general, much like how people outside of Wargaming might just see a tabletop game and go, oh, that's Warhammer. You find the same with FX and making model kits. At least that's been my experience on dates, anyway. <laughs> now, the TSR2 was done in an era of change for FX. In fact, it was originally released in 2006. Now, the 2006 boxing is the one I have, and it's the one with the nicest box art, in my opinion. After that, it was released in 2010-2013 in this Stratos 4 anime scheme. It does seem to come with all parts for the original, and there's some extra parts to make it into the anime scheme. So, it doesn't really seem to matter which boxing you get, you can still make a basic TSR 2. What's interesting, though, is that this hasn't then been re-released, and if this was re-released, would it be a vintage classic, or would it be a you know, normal FX kit. Isn't that really awkward time frame? Because it is 17 years old at this point. But I don't know if many people would be happy if it was re-released as Vintage Classic. What I do know though is the modeling community is crying out for both the Avro Arrow and the TSR2 to be re-released. These are such desirable prototype aircraft. And I'm sure if any company was to re-release them, <coughs> uh, but <coughs> gosh, terrible crop I've got, then I'm sure it would sell out. 
These kits sell upwards of £100 sometimes, which is mad. The amount of times I've been to a model show and I've seen some for like 60 quid and some for 100 and both have still sold. It is absolutely mad, especially when you can buy literal airliners that are 172nd scale for the same price. There is a lot of demand for both of these aircraft. Number four, the PZL Orlick. So I'm not sure what happened with my version of this kit. Originally it was definitely boxed, but I think I, when I was moving, tried to compress everything down and I threw a few boxes away regrettably because this is quite a rare kit. In fact, I've never seen it for sale since I originally got this one. Now the PZL Orlick is not hard to get when you look at resin kits, but injection molder kits are really really rare in fact i think there's only been maybe two or three releases and they seem to be spread out very very far apart this version i've got is from a company called asta and well it doesn't seem to be one that's really easily available anymore and i really hope it does get re-released at one point but it looks like it's just had the one release and it looks like it's short run it does have a vacuum form canopy as well, which is generally a good indication that it is a very short run kit. I've loved the PZL Orlick since I saw them display in the Orlick display team in 1998, which is actually their first international debut at the Royal International Attitude of that year. They were probably the first team that used propeller aircraft that I really genuinely fell in love with. I was so used to the fast jets that I saw at my first dash here the year before from people like the Il Forte Tricolori, Patrulla Aguila and the Ukrainian Vulcans that you know, propeller aircraft just didn't draw me the same way, and yet they smashed it. Now, I'm not actually opening this kit, and that's why I'm just seeing footage of, like, you know, the actual kit in a, in, in, in a bag, because I'm too scared to actually make it at this point. I really want to make sure that I can nail it when I make this aircraft. I'm not going to be able to get enough one. I mean, okay, I resin one, but I really want to make this one and do it justice and make it in true Polish Dislating colours. So maybe over the next year, We'll get to see this one because I am so excited to make it. Number three, Hellas Fuga Magister, finish edition. So I don't think anyone was expecting to see a Magister on this list, and I built three in this channel. I built two in Patrouille de France, and I built one in the Silver Swallows of the Arch Aircore. However, this is definitely a rare kit. I was actually sent this by you. Hey Jackson, if you're watching, thank you so much for this. And it does look like this is rare. I don't think it's valuable. It just seems unusual. In fact, I've actually had to get this added onto scale mix because it wasn't on there, which shocked me. I was looking on there to see when it was released and it wasn't there. This boxing just seems to be super rare. Hella actually did a lot of Finnish releases over the years and they're just the standard kits with Finnish aircraft and Finnish decals. In fact, it's not that rare as a kit, obviously. The Fuga Magister is still available today and I'm actually going to be using the contents of that box to make one for another project and then I'll keep the decals and instructions and the box and use it when I finally decide to do a finish version. It's really interesting that Hella decided to go through this whole finish phase, obviously to break the fetish model market. From what I can see, there were at least five releases. I can only see four that were in this box art style, which is like blue with them sort of the model on top of it. And then there was one that I can see that was an older release, which looks like it was from the 1980s prior to these ones. I see, I can find five of these online. Now, one of them is from way before, which is the Saab Draken. And that looks like it's from before these iterations because these are all in the same blue box setup. Whether or not the Draken had one of those places, I'm not sure, but I couldn't see one. However, in this sort of box art style, we have of course the Fuga Magister that we're looking at today. There's also the Saab Sophia, the propeller trainer. There's the Tichablin de Vampire, and there's also the Marine MS-406. So it's quite a wide range and it allows you to build a lot of aircraft of finished service. I'd love to see more of these. I think it's really fascinating when they do this. I know Hella have actually done quite a few of these sort of things where they've released things locally, including in Germany and for some anniversary things for other countries. Something we may be looking at later in the year. <laughs> There's not really much more to say about this kit. It's just rare for the fact that it's an unusual boxing and I've not seen it anywhere and it wasn't on scale mates over, which I think is kind of cool that I've got to add that. I've never had to do that before actually. <laughs> Number two, the Soko G4 Super Galab from Yumo Models. So this next one is the most controversial one on this list and it's not controversial because of the subject matter, it's controversial because of the kit itself. So obviously, with what's happened in Yugoslavia or 
what is now the former Yugoslavian Republic, or states. And before then, there was a company called Yumo, which built Yugoslavian models. That included the Soko G4 Super Galeb, which a lot of people basically just say is the Hawk, but make it Yugoslavian. You can definitely see a similarity in its design, in its looks. I've always found this fascinating because, well, growing up, obviously Yugoslavia was in the news quite a lot. And when I got flight simulators, I always tried to find the G2 and G4 to fly them and learn about them. And it really helps me see the world in different ways. I think that's one of the beautiful things about people who are interested in aviation. You not only learn about the aircraft itself, but you learn about where it's come from, its heritage, its history. It's how we learn all about Yugoslavia and watch documentaries on what happened. I'm not going to go into the politics of it, of course, but it's why this aircraft was something that I was very aware of. So when I found the model kit many years later, I started buying them because I wanted to make a whole display team of them. Unfortunately, as many of you know from my vlogs, I had to move house in quite a hurry. I actually left one or two of them there by accident and well I had to sell the rest in order to fund myself moving. I now only have one boxing but I love it. I'm so excited to build it in the Flying Stars display team colours. I had the decals for it already. I really wish I could get a couple of them and do them in like a really cool diorama but I don't think I'm ever going to be able to get the opportunity to get another one <laughs> so you know. Unless anyone well, wants to send me one, <laughs> feel free. <laughs> but why is this get controversial? Well, obviously it's rare anyway. This is from a Yugoslavian company, so obviously it doesn't exist anymore. But many of you probably sat there wondering, what happened to the tools? Were they just destroyed in the war? Well, a long time ago, I was doing an article on um, some of the Yugoslavian aircraft, an article that never actually got published for my website. I was emailing some manufacturers of Yugoslavian aircraft products for model making and what I got told and this is many 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 moons ago and I do not have like even the email account anymore but what I got told was basically the toolings did survive the war and they got split between two different companies it may have been more but they sort of bought them up and basically meant that it was too expensive for each of the companies to reproduce a you know, new injection molded kit but neither one wanted to see to the other one in order to allow them to have the riches of an injection molded kit and so ultimately it's just never been released even though the toolings definitely exist it's a real shame i think people could learn so much about the world and you could give a little booklet about the g4 and yugoslavia and what happened in fact the display team stopped existing because of the war I think it's so important to help people to understand what happened and it would be really cool to see that. Also this aircraft also still serves in both Myanmar and in Serbia. Very shortly it will probably be only Serbia that is using this aircraft and it's still really cool to see. This aircraft is not super hard to get hold of in resin form. There is Aeropoxy and also um, Lift here who both have released a kit at some point or another. And I think there was another brand as well that escapes me right now. Resin kits are obviously very different to injection molded. They do have a higher skill level but I mean I've got my fucking Mac trainer and I don't find it too hard and I've also got the J22 to do. So you know I don't think it's unavailable but this kit itself in this boxing is. There is an even rarer version of this kit, which is in the Flying Stars display team colours. I've never seen it and never come across it, but one day I'd love to have the box to put on my wall. I just really hope one day we get out of a G4 re-release because, like I say, it would be so cool to have this in like an anniversary box set or something, have it in all the different schemes, maybe a double set. It's just, oh, it would be so cool. But I get it as well that like for a bigger company, this is going to have super limited appeal. But sure. You like making obscure, limited red aircraft. I mean, you made the Loire Nouveau 411, so why not make a super glove? Just, just saying, just saying. We're down to the last aircraft on this list, and this one is interesting. Number one, the Casa C101 Aviojet from Hobbybird. Like I said before, I'm fully aware that there are going to be kits that reproduce some fewer numbers that are probably harder to get hold of or have higher value and so reviewed as more rare as a result of that. That's fine. I've done this based on my collection and what, you know, I eventually do want to build. 
Now, the Casa C101 Aviojet is a Spanish jet trainer that replaced the HA200 Zeta in service. The C101 is also the mount of the Paprula Aguila, the Spanish aerobatics display team, and this aircraft is famously underpowered. If you do want to go and watch them performing, I've got links in the description for my videos on Fairford where they've performed. I told this display team, and they're one of the only display teams to use yellow. The only other times I've seen yellow smoke was, well, the Belgium Air Force open days when they have their Alpha Jets fly over with them, but they're not a full display team. I think this may be the rarest in my collection. I've literally never seen another one of these to sell. I've seen the resin versions of these everywhere. They're not hard to get hold of. The C101 was sold to multiple other Air Forces, and that included Jordan, Honduras, Chile, and obviously Spain. And yeah, it's never seen wide release as a model cat. This kind of surprises me because I would have thought someone would want it to make it because people love making display team app right for a start. I mean, Matchbox did a whole series on them. Atari have done a whole series on them. Yet this one just seems to not exist. Even though you could do like a really cool combination of aircraft, just like a box set for the history of the Patrulla Aguila, including like um, Patrulla Ascoa, which flew the F-86 in a similar scheme to Patrulla Aguila. You could have the um, Rajak 1 team, which I couldn't see a proper name for. <laughs> and then they also had um, a team flying T-33s and a team flying T-6s. Most of those model kits are really easy to get hold of and make a license so you can make a really cool kit of them. I'm sure it'll probably never happen because unfortunately the C101 is reaching the end of its life. My boxing of this actually has parts missing. It has a thing, a landing gear wheel and it has a ejector seat missing. I've actually just bought some ejector seats to replace them and the box itself was also in horrendous condition when I got it. I've actually Gorilla glued it all back together. In fact, that's happened with a couple of these boxes and I'm trying to keep them really safe, so I keep them all in a separate drawer, safe away from the rest of my stash to make sure they stay in really good condition. These kits are quite rare, and I do want to preserve them as much as I can. I mean, I take a bit of a hint from Karen Puzzles here that although I'm making the model kit, and the model kit will obviously never be replaced, I do want to keep the boxes because it's part of modeling history. It's only something I've started doing recently though, so like with the pizza at all, like, that's the thing that is long gone. This kit was originally released in 1987 in Spanish training colours. Not in display team colours, just in the standard markings. And then in 1990s as a Chilean boxing, which is the one I have. This also has underwing uh, armaments as well, because this aircraft could be used as a coin or light strike aircraft as well. It does seem incredibly hard to get hold of. I'm not sure if it was just limited run or uh, whatever, but it was made by a company called Hobbybird and... Well, have you heard of them? Because I definitely had not. Thank you so much for joining me. This is a very different video to what I've done before. And it's just something I thought, hey, I want you guys to see that these things exist and that one day I will do them. I think I also wanted to make this video because I think it's important to say that <laughs> impacts everyone. Although I've made videos always talking about conquering, <laughs> it still affects me too. These kits are all ones that I was too scared to make. In fact, some of these I've had for years. TC101 is one in particular that I've had for a very long time, since that on my website actually. What's important is that you're having fun making models, because ultimately, that's what this is all about. Some people I know just like to collect models as well. But I think I will say this, if you have no intention of ever building a model kit, why not find someone who would love to build that kit? Someone who finds that aircraft, that subject, that tank, that ship, that bird, super fascinating and really wants that on their shelf. Because ultimately, that's what this hobby is all about. Making things, being passionate, and being beautifully creative. I don't know where that passionate round came from, but <laughs> it happened. So thank you guys for being here. I absolutely appreciate all of you. And if you liked this video, make sure to drop a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see these get built eventually. I mean, at least the Fuga is going to be built relatively soon. <laughs> if you do want to support the channel, you can do so through a channel membership. That really helps me out in order to buy, well, new bottle kits, but also new paints and supplies. You can also do a super chat if that's more your thing. If you don't want to use the YouTube ecosystem, you can also support me over on Kofi as a one-off donation, or you could do it as a monthly donation. What I would like to say though is always make sure that it's financially sensible for you to support someone. I'm going to be making these videos anyway, 
Although I appreciate the support, make sure that it's not going to impact you. Thank you so much. And uh, I'll see you in the next video. Yep. Bye. Thank you to all of my channel members. You really help keep the channel going. Advanced kits do get a shout out. So we've got Sophie, Mrs. Time Lord, Iron Duke, 50s Bin Man, Crazy Loacher, and Explosive Water. Thank you so much for all helping to support the channel and make sure that I can buy new paints, which I've been doing so to invest back in the channel. You guys are absolutely amazing. And I don't care what level you are, you guys rock. If you enjoyed this video, as I say, make sure you hit that subscribe button and there's a recommended video here that I think you should check out. Ooh, it's been chosen specially for you. Right, you hit the link, I'll grab the snacks. Let's go watch this video together.